Amen. Let us pray. God, we are thankful this morning that you have blessed us. Thank you, Lord, for another year. Thank you for the changes that has been made, Lord. We know that you are with us and that you are covering us in all that happens and in all that we do. We thank you, Lord, for everything that you have done. We ask, oh God, that you would continue to lead us, continue to guide us, Lord, in whatever direction we need to be guided in. Thank you, Lord, that there is hope, there is a vaccine. There are things that you are putting in place that is for us. And all you're asking is that we would just let go and allow you to work. We thank you now. Continue to bless us. Bless our churches, Lord, that are suffering in many ways, Lord. Be with us in a special way, and we'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. The scripture that I would like to read this morning is found in the book of Isaiah. That is the 55th chapter, and we're going to read that is beginning at the 6th verse. It says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let them return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our God for he will do an abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts neither are your ways my ways said the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. Amen. Sister Henry is going to come to us just at this time with praise and worship. Good morning, Joseph Congo. God is great and he is good and he is greatly to be praised. And I love you once again. And one of the reasons, just one of the reasons why I can tell you God is so great. 
He is so wonderful. And I know without a shadow of a doubt that many of you know that. Amen. It's time for us to pray. And there's many things that we have to pray about. And we know what's going on around us at this particular time. And not only the pandemic, but we have a lot of personal problems and things that are happening in our lives. We have needs. But I'm so glad that God said that we can come boldly before the throne of grace that is in the time of need. And we can receive mercy. And oh, how we need mercy. Surely goodness and mercy yes. shall follow us in all the days of our lives. And I thank God for that. And I need that mercy. And I know you need that mercy as well as the healing and everything else that's needed that is in this land. So we're going to pray. And we're going to ask everybody out there to pray to Joseph Combo family and our extended family that you would pray for, uh, with us and pray for the blessings of God. Father, we come now in the name of Jesus. And God, we come, Lord, because we know that your arms are open. They're open wide. And you have golden gifts that is within your arms. The gift of healing, the gift of administration, you know, the gift of just even minding your own business. And we thank you for that, God. We're going to ask God that you would bless America at this time in a special kind of a way. The exchangings of leaderships, and we have a lot of things going on around us. But God, the main thing that we're going to hold to is that you are in charge. And we thank you for that. From the rising of the sun until the going down of the slave, you're still God that is from everlasting to everlasting. You are Alpha and Omega. You are my beginning, and you're my end. And God, we're praying, Lord, that you would just continue to bless us, Lord. We know that our hospitals are, are overfilled and overpacked with people, Lord, with COVID and, we, and with, with other diseases. And as we look around and we see the things that are happening politically and the poison that has gotten into it, God, we just ask that you would pray and that you would bless us in a special way as we pray. We thank you, Lord, for how you have delivered us. We thank you this morning. It's many that I not able to see this day, but you have not taken our names off of the list. Thank you, Lord, for life, and thank you, Lord, for life more abundantly. Bless the elderly, Lord. Bless those that are hospitalized, the first responders, God. Bless all of the people, Lord, that has contacted this virus, Lord. Be with them in a special kind of a way, Lord. Be with every church, Lord, every church leader at this particular time. And we all know what you're going through at this time. We ask, oh God, that, that great song that somebody's going to walk around, that you would bless that family and be with them because we hear about it every hour that is of the day. Father, we thank you for your love and your concern and everything that you've done for the children of man. We thank you now. We ask that you would bless the little touch and continue to be the God that you can. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. We're going to have a song now from Sister Tanya. I, 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 I forgot my prayer song, but she's going to come now.
is great and he is greatly to be praised. I thank I want to thank you, Brother Panola, and assisted me, amen, because some of these days are not my best days, and then not only that, amen, uh, sometimes uh, when cold weather comes, the author boys, they kind of act up on But anyhow, God has been so good, amen, and we thank him for that. Father, we love you today. We love your people, your word. And we ask in the name of Jesus that you would bless us today. Be with us in a special way. Thank you for all of the wonderful songs, and arrangements, and thank you for the music, musicians. Thank you, Lord, for how you have blessed us and you brought us this far. And yet we're looking for brighter days, and we believe that brighter days are sweetly dawning. And we just ask that you would just bless every aspect of this service as we come now. Be with us in a special way. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. For God's ways is not like our ways, and His thoughts are not like our thoughts. I want to talk about let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Amen. Still not comfortable yet, but I'll get there. I'll find that lit. Oh, yes, I found that. God is so good. Amen. And amen. Now, in this Christian life, we believe that we should be always have faith and believe in the promises of God and all of the titanic things that, the big things that God has promised us in our dreams and visions we should have. Amen. You see, we believe that we're going to meet the right person. Amen. And not only that, but we're asking God to understand that he would, that he would step in and help us with our health and our retirement and all of those good things, that God will be able to do what? To turn some things around that is in our life. We believe in God for that. Amen. Amen. And, and, and the thing about it is we're still asking God that is to bless us and allow our ship, as I say it all the time, for our ship to come in one day. And you wonder when. When is it going to happen? When is it going to happen? You understand? And then too often, if it don't happen, the way that we think it should happen, you understand? And if it don't happen on our timetable, believe it or not, then we get frustrated and we begin to question God, you understand? When are you going to turn this thing around? You understand? When are you going to help my spouse? That is with uh, her health and the situation her health needs to improve. When are you going to have that situation at work in the one that we got in the church? When are you going to turn it around? Amen. But, but look, we can't do it. We can't put God in a box and tell him how to do it. Amen. When he should do it. When it should happen. Who it should happen to. Amen. Or who do you should understand. If it's not working out that in the way we think, then we get what? A little discouraged, believe it or not. But after you have prayed, amen, and after you have prayed, you see, your prayer, you have to leave when, when it's going to happen and how it's going to happen, you have to leave that up to God. You see, if you put a time frame on it, amen, and a method of how it's going to be done, then what God is doing and then how it's going to happen, you understand, you're going to be very discouraged and very disappointed, very disappointed if it doesn't happen in your time frame. Everybody, everybody loves being in charge. They love being in charge. Simply because what God is trying to simply tell us, his ways is not like our ways. And his thoughts are not like our thoughts. He's working with, he's working with you can't see him. He's working behind the scene. Amen. And sometimes it takes longer because he's going to do what? He's going to come up with something better than you want at that particular time. Is that what it is? That's the way he works. Amen. And if you are a child of God, a child of the Most High, you understand? We all need to do what? Trust God's timing. Trust his ways. You understand? Oh, God's promises is going to come back. Amen. You see? It's going to happen, but it may not happen the way you think it's going to happen. And not only that, it may not happen on your watch. Can I borrow a, a quote from Dr. Martin Luther King? He said that you all may get to the promised land, but guess what? I may not get there with you. But we still going to get what? To the promised land. 
Can I, can I borrow a quote from the Bible? God took Moses up on the mountaintop, showed him the promised land, and told him, guess what? You will never put foot in it. Isn't that something? It's going to happen. But it don't have to happen in your time, on your watch, with your people, the way you think it ought to happen. But it's going to happen. And when it don't happen their way, it's not a flip-flop either. Am I right about that? Lord, have mercy. You see, we can't control the outcome and what the outcome is going to be. You understand? We can't live worried. We have to do what? Release the control. Release the control. Amen. Release. Release it. You understand? You don't have to have it to happen your way because God has already done what? He's already figured it out. He's figured it out. Believe it or not. You see, now when he figures it out, he doesn't always do what? Give us all the detail of how it's going to happen and everything, uh, how it's going to work out and all of that. You understand? If he would do that, we would not need to have what? Faith to believe and whatever. To trust God. And this is the problem. We stop trusting God and start trusting in ourselves and we want to take control. Put our mouth on people. You understand? You see? They, he gonna reap what he sowed. He may not never reap what he sowed. If he does, you may not see it. Why does God have to work on your little timetable? Lord, have mercy. It may, it may be hard for some folks to believe. You understand? But God has it all worked out. And guess what? He has my life all planned out. Have you ever seen the enemy say, I don't know how I'm going to end up? Some of you people do. They just sit down and tell you everything's going to happen. And I say, yeah. Do you really believe that? You understand? How many of y'all know what I'm talking He's doing things that you can't see. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That, 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 that's, you're going to get some breaks and some blessings that are coming your way. You understand? You're going to get healing and favor and all of that. You understand? God is going to place people in your life in order to help you out. But it may not happen your way. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? You see, I'll be glad when she moved on. She may stay there a hundred more years and walk around your room. <laughs> Y'all don't believe that? I don't know what God's going to do. You understand? If you told me, what, 20 years ago there would be a pandemic like this? I said, well, no, wait a minute. I don't know about that. You understand? But God always knows what he is doing. You understand? How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? You see, he's already scheduled everything out and we need to release control so that you can do what? You, so that you can enjoy your life. That is why you are waiting for things to change. Well, well, what, 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 what's up? What, what are you saying, you know what I mean? What, what are you saying, you know what I mean? You see, I, 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 there's nothing wrong with me being worried and waiting and all of that, you understand? You see, but in the midst of it, you can't get a good night's sleep. Your blood pressure is up. Your sugar is up. Amen. Your spirit is down. Amen. When God is saying, I'm in control, I'm the one that's ordering your step, then he says, who woke you up this morning? That's all he has to say to me. Well, who woke y'all up this morning? If you know so much, who woke you But I said it for the CD, and I heard it. You heard it on the CD, but you didn't hear God. You need to listen to God. Amen. God is saying, I'm in control. I'm ordering your steps, you understand. And all you have to do is trust me because we walk by faith and never by sight. That's the word of God. It's the word of God. You understand? How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? The Bible said, those who have believed, they enter into rest. Rest. There's an ultimate rest. And there's a rest that you can have here. Have you ever heard people, uh, uh, see, heard uh, uh, folks walk about folks uh, in the coffin when they're dead or in the casket, and they said they look so peaceful. My only question is, why do you have some peace? Why you living? Why you got to die look peaceful? I don't want to look peaceful now. I'm trusting a God that can bring peace. Am I right about that? Why I got to wait until I'm up in bond and somebody put some makeup on my face and a fake smile? You paid the undertaker to put the smile on the man or woman's face and then you have peace. Oh Lord, we need to think about some of this stuff. I want me some peace right now. I'm sorry. I want me some peace in the midst of the pandemic. I want me some peace after the pandemic is over with. I want me some peace while I'm young. And why I'm old. 
I don't want to just look at it, but way out on the inside. Oh, well, y'all don't hear me today. Ain't nobody saying that today. I'm going to need some peace. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? You see, you may not see everything changing. You understand? You might be tempted to worry. You understand? But stay at rest, stay at peace with God. You understand? Because when you stay, you restful in God. You can trust Him. You understand? When you're at rest, you're in faith, believe it or not. It's, sign, uh, it's a sign that you have what? You have not stopped believing. But enter into the rest of God. Come back to the peace of God. You understand? You see, you can't trust God and be worried and, and fearful, amen, and, and, and wanting to leave God at the same time and do things your way. You can't do that. You understand? Because when you release control, you're not at your best for God. You see, you're not able to say that all things work together for the good of them that love God and are called according to his purpose. And what I have learned about God, beloved, is whatever he started, he's going to finish. Now, if God starts something with you, he's going to finish. Well, you know, I started about uh, 50 years ago when I was a preacher and something happened. Something that happened to me more than one time. And I started out 37 years ago. Sit down and talk with me and say, has anything happened not for me to drop God off and to flee from him and to say it's all over? Whatever he started, he's going to finish. Amen. You see? Well, what you don't know, preacher, is folks are worried and worried. And sometimes they get worried. I'm worried about my children. I'm worried about uh, their academics. I'm worried about the pandemic at this time. You understand? I'm worried about my stimulus. You understand? That's just a sign that you need to do what? Release and relinquish your control and rest on the promises and the peace of God. What are we going to do? You ain't in control. You don't know what's going to happen the next second. Every time my phone rings these days with this pandemic, there's not good news on the other end. I want to see all these people who know everything. You get tired of it. You know this, you know that relinquish, relinquish, and release control. It's time for you to trust God. That's all there is to it. But here's the question. Amen. Why do we like being in control? You understand. Why do we like being in control? Control of your life, control of your destiny, and all of that. You see, control is used as a power over others. Somebody else to get them to do what they won't do. Amen. To stop others from having what? What they won't. Even from stop, stopping them from doing what? Having it, having uh, the way that they feel about the situation. I have to tell a guy the other day if he feels that way, it's okay. It's okay for people to feel the way they feel. What are you going to do about it? You understand? You can't do anything about it. People have a right to feel what they want, what they're feeling. And they have a right to express their feelings. You understand? People who control folks in many cases, it makes them feel like they have confidence. It makes them feel happy if they're in control. Got to be in control. Don't know how to say, let that person do their job and I'm going to do my job. They got to be in control. You understand? How many of y'all know what we're talking about? If a person has, has a, if you're under their control now, they may, I'm going to be honest with you, you understand? You may have lost your what? Your identity. You understand? You may have lost your personality. You may have lost your independency. Amen. You see, because this word control is something, it means that somebody else besides God is trying to watch over you and order what you are doing. That can't be. And that can't be. You understand? You see? You see, it's, and the thing about it is when you relinquish your control and relief, it's then that God can bring the promises that is to pass. Amen. But you have to do what? Stay open to how it's going to happen. It may not happen the way you think that it is going to happen. You understand? How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I've learned some preachers that they said, uh, when are you going to retire? And this one, I'm going to retire then. I'm going to retire then. I said, I don't know. I mean, die before that happens. You didn't get me to be talking about stuff like that. I don't know. Your time 
people don't mean much to God. Somebody say, why? His thoughts are not like your thoughts. His way is not like your way. He's not going to do it your way. What you going to do, twist his arm? You going to push him in a corner? You going to bottleneck him and say, do it this way? It's not going to happen. That ain't going to happen, y'all. I'm very sorry. You're going to be very disappointed. You understand? You see, if you just sit on having your way, you understand? You're going to do it your way anyhow. You're the one that's going to be frustrated. You understand? Because God does things what? Out of the ordinary, he does unusual things. You understand? You see, he does things when? Now. You don't have to wait until you tell him to do it. You understand? Well, Lord, I'm praying for the 25th day of, 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 of 2025. You understand? God will do it tomorrow. Push you out of the way. So you, you get move, move over. Move, move over. God does it now sometimes. You understand? But I want him to do it traditional like he did uh, to uh, Aunt Pookie and them and, and Big Mom and them and all of that. You understand? Lord have mercy. I want you to do it like you did with my best friend. Well, are you, are you upset? Because something hasn't happened your way, you understand? And we all are. A lot of us were just upset. It didn't happen my way, you understand? It just did, you understand? But you see, God, sometimes do it right. Uh, uh, don't do it right now because he has something better for you. If you could just do what? Just take a number and have a seat and wait. That's all you need to do. Take a number. Set your happy self down. Stop trying to be in control. I can tell every person that get up and get behind the mic trying to be in control. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? You see, the delay, the disappointment, the setback is not working against you. Really, it's working for you, you understand. But it's working for your good, you understand. And the thing we need to do is just do what? Release control, you understand. But I'm so glad that God is still going to do what? He's still doing unusual things, unprecedented things. He's doing things all of a sudden, you understand. There's no set method for him, you understand. It may not be going the way you want it to go. But it could be that it's going the way God wanted to go. Mm. Amen? Amen? Well, I'm believing God for a car, you understand. I believe in Him for God and praying, you understand. You, you see, you went down to the dealership, he, he turned you down. But if you would have waited, God would have gave you two cars. Amen. I heard a lady said, I've been waiting to have a baby for five years. Went at, uh, I got pregnant about the next year and had triplets. Mm. All you got to do. Is take yourself out of your keeping and put yourself in the keeping of God and trust Him. I've heard so many versions of what to do during the pandemic. I got a good one for you. Pray. Wash your face, anoint your head, sit your happy self down, either bow down on your knees, you understand, slump your head between your, your shoulders and pray. Pray, try, try doing that. You understand? Try, stop trying to tell people, do A, B, and C, and it's going to be all right. You understand? You are not in, oh Lord, have mercy, control. I wish I had somebody to help me up in here. You understand? If you wait, it's going to be bigger and better than you ever think. You understand? You see? And see, and, and, and people are against you sometimes when you're having trouble, when you're going through, you understand, but God is going to turn it around. All you got to do is wait over it. Some right, wait on him. Some right will say, wait over in the midnight hour. When nobody is around, God is going to do what? He's going to turn it around. You don't have to turn it around at church. You understand? You don't have to turn it around while you're talking to your BFF and your confidant and all of that. God is in control and he knows what he is doing. You understand? Changes are coming. You understand? How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? You see? Changes are coming. You see? The scripture talks about there's a set time uh, 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 whereby God is going to do what? Whereby God is going to bless. He has a set time for you. And I believe that. God is going to do what faith for you. He's going to bless you. He's going to turn it around. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? He's going to bless you financially. He has a set time. You understand? You see, if there is a right time, then there is what? A wrong time. And I want to be dealing with the right time. I want to deal with God's time. 
you understand. Instead of fighting God right where you are, you understand. God is trying to do what? Embrace you and bless you. Amen. God is not going to just uh, accidentally miss your set time. He has a blessing for you. Amen. You ain't got to worry about it. A little guy, he said he was troubled about his business taking off. Uh, you know what I mean? He started for about a year and a half. And I told him these words, I said, look, hang in there, man. Because I believe God has a blessing for you. You're not sinning. You're not doing anything wrong. You're just trying to provide for your family. He said in about a year and a half, his business took off. He sold so much stuff. He said, you just wouldn't believe. There was a set time for that. Yeah. If you just get away, they that way upon the Lord. If you just didn't wait, God ain't put you in charge of no church. I ain't in charge of no church. God built the airplane and I'm the pilot. It is his airplane. And when you understand that, the better off that you will be, believe it or not, the day of his blessings is nothing but a gift. And God is blessing us. God is going to bring it to pass. All of the peace and joy Happiness should be. God is going to bring it to pass. You understand? God is going to turn everything around if you would just give him a little time. You understand? But you got to do what? You got to put your spiritual foot down. And you got to say, I'm not in charge. I'm sorry, I'm not in charge of this. That's what you got to do. I'm not in charge. God is in charge. And as long as you believe that, then God is going to bless you. That he'll, he'll bless you through the challenges and the setback that you're going to have because he's still on the throne. His timing is not your timing. His ways is not your way. But what you have to do is relinquish that is your timing, the method, the time that you wanted to have, that set time that you want things to have. If you would just what? Just become limp and just do what? Just, just just, lean back on the promises of God, then you'll be blessed. So we're told about a man who jumped into a swimming pool and he started drowning. There was a lifeguard there, and the lifeguard was looking at the man, and there were people around him. And the man started drowning. And the lifeguard looked at the man, came up one time, and he went down. Lord have mercy. The people were looking at the lifeguard, uh, saying, well, why, why, don't you, why don't you save him? You understand? The man came up again, boom, 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 went down again. The man came up the third time, he dove in. He went and got the man saved and put the water that is out of his system. Everybody said, why didn't you save him? You saw him crown and he could have been dead. He said, oh no, I had to wait until he became limp and in a position whereby while I'm trying to save him, he wouldn't fight me. And we both would drown what together. We need to stop fighting God. You need to relinquish. You need to relinquish that is everything over to Him. Release your control because that's what He had to wait for the man to do. Get to, to position. Get to a position whereby He could be helped. The timing. He has to go down one time. He got to go down another time. The way up, the God is down. Oh, Lord, have mercy. I wish we would get this on the new year. Because I see so many people trying to be in charge of everything in life. Please don't try it with me. Because I'm trusting God. You understand? I'm like Paul. For God I live, and for God I die. You understand? You see? I know what I'm believing. I'm, I'm, I'm just believing that he's faithful. That is to bring me through most anything that come my way. A lot of you are frustrated and for nothing, really. For nothing. They're frustrated for nothing. But of course, if you go and walk up to the person right now and say, what are you really doing for God? They can't tell you. They can't tell you five things that they're doing for God. But they still yet want to do what? Be in control. Be in control. God's time is not my time, his ways is not my ways. And I want to live happy that it's on this year. All you got to do is let it go. Let go and let God. Let it go. That's all you have to do. Father, we thank you.
Why? Because there are people who think that they're in charge. Not only their lives, but people around them. But I had the scripture that it said, in him we move, we live. Lord have mercy. We move and we have our being. And Lord, we're going to trust you. Because you said to trust in the Lord with all thine heart and to lean not to our own understanding and all of our ways acknowledge you. That means to take yourself out of your own keeping and place yourself in the keeping of God and you will be better off. We thank you this morning, Lord, that we can lift the text that can encourage somebody. We ask now as we go that you bless us, be with us in a special way, and God will thank you for it in Jesus' name. Lord, if there's somebody out there that don't know you, if there's somebody out there right now, Lord, that's struggling with life, if there's somebody out there that has that have control, let them, let them relinquish, Lord, that control and hand over the deed and title to their lives to you in order that you might bless them. We thank you, Lord. We ask that you would continue to bless us now. Be with every one of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Brother Tim is going to come to us then. So Tanya has an announcement and a song. Thank you. Praise the Lord for that word on today. But we know that we don't, the battles of the battle is not ours, but it's the Lord's. And so we don't have to fight. If you've been blessed by this message on today and you want to sell a seat into this ministry, we can do that, or you can do that by giving a buy. You can also put a check in the mail. 17401 Joseph Conrad, Detroit, Michigan, 48215. If you've been blessed, we thank you. And hopefully you've been blessed by, encouraged by the word of God. And hopefully again, the next time we come on, that you'll be a part of this ministry. Thank you. In Jesus' name. This evening, um, at 6 o'clock, Malou will